If you're interested in investing in multifamily real estate or apartment buildings, chances are you've come across the term syndication. But who controls the syndication? Who decides when to refinance? Who decides when to sell? Who sets the market rent? Who sets the strategy? Well, in this video, I'm going to walk you through who manages a syndication deal so you can make better real estate investing decisions. So make sure you hit the subscribe button right now so you don't miss more videos about building wealth through multifamily real estate. And if you don't know me, I'm Seth Ferguson, a 12 year real estate veteran, host of a real estate TV show, host of a real estate investing podcast, and I'm also the author of the real estate book, Sell For More. So let's get right into it and talk about who manages or who controls a real estate syndication. When we talk about managing or controlling a real estate syndication, I like to break this down into three different layers. So let's start off uh, by drawing the property itself down here at the bottom. And uh, this won't count as a layer because my drawing skills are so poor. Uh, but for the sake of this example, let's just say this is a 200 unit apartment building that we are acquiring. On layer number one, we have our entity. This is the entity that actually owns a piece of real estate. This can take the form of an LP, limited partnership, and LLC. There are, are a couple different forms that this can take, and this will be dependent upon the uh, type of investment and uh, the structure. So on layer number two, uh, we have our entity, but how do we actually own pieces of uh, the entity? Because the entity itself owns a piece of real estate, but how do we as people participating it own it? Well, it's made up of different shares. Just like how you own shares of a business, it's the, same, it's the same principle here. We actually buy shares, we acquire shares of the holding entity, and this is how we get our ownership of the piece of real estate. Generally speaking in the syndication, you have three different classes of shares. You have a class A, you have class B, and class C. For the sake of today, to keep things simple, we will eliminate class B because uh, these uh, are a little bit of a wild card uh, share and we will concentrate on class A and class C. And you're probably asking yourself, well, why do we have different classes of shares? This is the beautiful thing about syndication because we are able to customize the structure of our entity to fit the specific investment need. This is how the sharing of profits is dictated. So for instance, maybe a class C share will have 25% of the profits and then a class A share will get 25%. Maybe a class C share will have a preferred return and the class A share will not. And maybe we even have two different classes of class C shares. So maybe uh, one class is uh, participating in the upside, it's more equity and maybe another class of class C shares is getting a straight 10% return on their investment. This is why syndication is such a beautiful structure. It is made to raise large amounts of capital for these purposes and to really customize it and tailor it to the investor's needs and expectations. So we know that we have different classes of shares that can be customized uh, depending on the situation, but who gets to buy or purchase or acquire these different classes of shares? And this is where we have our third layer and we talk about GPs and we talk about LPs. GP stands for general partner and LP stands for limited partner. And when we are talking about multifamily real estate investing, the LP, the limited partners, they are the ones bringing their capital into the mix. They are investing their capital only. They're not doing anything else. And this is true passive investing. The syndication structure allows for true passive investing and LPs are actually afforded protections under the law in case something goes bad. They are risking their capital uh, only, just like with any other investment, their capital is at risk. Uh, but the GPs, the general partners, because the GPs are the people with the real estate experience, they have the track record, they are actually shouldering the risk when it comes to managing the deal. The LPs have their capital at risk, just like with any other investment, but it's the GPs in case something goes wrong, the GPs shoulder all the risks. So this is why the syndication structure is a beautiful structure for passive investing in real estate. So we know who a GP is, we know who an LP is, but how does this relate to shares? Well, generally speaking, the limited partners, the LPs, will acquire 
class C shares. This is the class of share that will have a preferred return most likely. Uh, they will participate in the upside of the equity unless there's a couple different classes of that share where maybe one's paying 10%, uh, but that's getting a little more uh, sophisticated with the setup. Uh, for the purposes of today, the LPs will acquire typically class C shares. Now, when we talk about control, uh, it all comes down to voting rights. This is why the GPs, the general partners are given class A shares. Class A shares have voting rights. So if you own a class A share, you are able to vote. You are able to voice your opinion and make decisions about the course the entity takes. A class C share, you know how I mentioned that it's true passive investing? The, the LPs who are acquiring, purchasing these class C shares, they're they are investing in the entity, but they're along for the ride because they're bringing their capital only into the entity. They're not making any decisions. They're not controlling anything. Thus, Class C shares have no voting rights. But Class A shares, where you have the GPs who are hands-on, managing the deal, deciding when to refinance, uh, when to sell the property, setting rents, uh, what renovations to do, uh, which tenants to keep, which tenants we want to move out, all that sort of stuff. This is where you need voting rights. Now, I did a video previously about the capital stack and who gets paid first, who gets paid last, all that sort of stuff. So if you're interested in learning more about uh, you know, class A, class B, class C shares, check out that video and I'll put a link right up here. The whiteboard right now looks like I'm a football coach uh, writing out a very complicated play. So let's do a quick recap. So first of all, we have our property down here. When we acquire a property using the syndication model, we have our entity that actually owns a piece of real estate. And for us to invest or participate in that property, we acquire shares. And uh, there are typically three classes of shares, but for today we talked about class A and class C. Class C's are acquired by limited partners who are bringing their capital into the entity. They are passively investing, but they don't have any voting rights. They are passively investing. They are just bringing their capital. Thus, they do not get to vote on any decisions that, uh, that need to be made. The general partners, these are the workhorses. These are the people actually managing the deal, making sure that money the LPs have invested is working hard and generating those expected returns. The GPs have class A shares. These are the shares they are assigned and they come with voting rights. So you are able to vote and make decisions about what happens to this property uh, through the holding entity. So in a nutshell, who controls a multifamily real estate syndication? Well, the answer to that is whoever controls the shares with the voting rights. If you're interested in learning more about the deals I'm currently doing, head on over to callseth.com and set up a free 20 minute phone call with me. And if you like this video, if you found this useful, hit the like button, leave a comment, let me know what you think. And until next time, happy investing.